The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 to 8. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field has yet in the earth, and no herb of the field has yet sprung up, for the Lord God has not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was no one to work the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and the water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord formed mad from dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and he put man there where he had formed. The New Testament reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 37 to 39. No, in all these things were more conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else of all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, God. I have many things to thank God for. Um, For those of you who don't know, that was my youngest child. Her name is Harvest. And I'm just being the proud father, you know, I I really am. I'm excited about what God is doing within our lives here at Waiokeola. So again, good morning. As I mentioned, um, at the start of our service, we're starting a new sermon series today, which I've titled, We Were Created. See, but as Christians, we believe that, right? Well, we're supposed to believe that, that we human beings, as well as the rest of the universe and everything in, within the universe, the planet, the stars, the earth, plants, trees, animals, and all that, meaning everything was created by an eternal, all-powerful, and all-knowing being who we call God. And in particular, in this instance, God the Father. See, but if you don't believe that God created everything, you know, that's okay as well. I'm, I'm not here to debate about um, your views of creation, whether it was through evolution or whether it was through some mix or whatever, you know, because God's not threatened by our unbelief. He's not, because the truth is truth, and it will stand, and the test of time will prove in the end who's correct, right? No, he's not threatened at all, but Catch this, and today's theme is love. God loves us so much that he'll meet us where we are, even in our unbelief. Regardless of what belief, he loves us and he meets us. That's how great the love of our Father is. But the catch is that he loves us too much to leave us there. He'll meet us where we're at, but he loves us too too much to leave us there. So let me tell you a joke to kind of lighten the mood because I'm not here to argue with anyone about, you know, how creation started and so forth. So, you know, I'm just sharing my point of view, which was influenced by the Bible. And if you have a different point of view, it's, I'm okay with that. And I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you about your point of view. So let me just uh, share my joke. So one day, a little girl asks her mother, Mom, how did human beings, you know, how did the human race appear? And her mother, being a Christian, answered, Well, honey, God created the heavens and the earth. He made the first man and named him Adam out of the dust of the earth. Okay, And then he did something even more special. He created Eve, the first woman from Adam's rib. And then they had children, and that's how, and their children had children, and the children had children, and that's how human beings populated the earth. And she was satisfied with that. But the next day, just out of her continuing curiosity, she asked her father. She asked the father the same question, and her father answered, well, honey, hundreds of millions of years ago, through some genetic mutations, which were miraculous in itself, fish evolved from single cells. Okay, and they evolved into amphibians. 
and then, amphib- and then and amphibians into birds, and birds to reptiles, and, and finally to mammals. And then, then eventually the apes evolved into human beings. And that's how human beings came into existence. Well, obviously the little girl was confused. So she returns to her mother and asks, you know, Mom, how is it possible that you told me that human beings, that the human race was created by God? And yet dad says that humans evolve from apes. I just don't understand. The mother thought and answered wisely, well, dear, it's simple. You know, I told you, the story that I told you was about my side of the family. (laughs) And your father told you about his. See, we don't have to argue. We don't. We, we don't. We don't have to. And person, personally, as, as you all know, I believe that we were created by God, a loving God. And he created us because he loved us. How do we know that? He proved his love to us on the cross where he says, you know, um, my goodness, I just went blank. But, you know, for God so loved the world. Right? He says that, that I love the world so much that I gave my one and only son, that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. We won't perish, but we'll be in this relationship, this eternal relationship with him. And because we're created by this God, we are created in his image. And we're created, that word image is, should be better translated as impression, his imprint. And we're created with his impression, his imprint on us so that we should resemble our Father in heaven. Kind of like how my daughter resembles me, which is, I don't know if it's a good thing, but (laughs) thank God my wife is beautiful, right? And she resembles my wife as well. So yeah, it's a good thing. We should resemble our Father in heaven. Not so much just physically, but also the spiritual aspect of it. And that's what we're going to be exploring through this series. But however, as the Bible tells us, human beings pulled away from God. The first created beings, Adam and Eve, chose to disobey God and his instructions. They, they sinned, and their sin distanced them from God. And ever since their original sin, human beings have been trying to fill that void, that impression in which that hand of God was lifted off of us because sin separates us from God. And no matter how hard we try, we can't fill that void. How many of you remember what what that was like before you accepted God's forgiveness into your life, right? How many of you remember that emptiness, that longing? Yeah. Every, everyone do this for me if you're, if you're able. If, if you could just, you know, put your hands together and just, if you bend your, your fingers and leave your thumbs kind of straight, it kind of resembles a heart shape, right? That heart shape, that empty heart was what I felt for so many years. So, so many years. This, this emptiness within my soul, within my being. For nearly half my life, I felt that puka, that hole within me. You know, and, and it drove me to do a lot of stupid things. Thinking back, I, I can't... Yeah, I'm embarrassed to even think about them. You know... And we do those stupid things to try to appease that emptiness, to fill that void, that angst, that uneasiness that just won't go away. It may go away for a fleeting moment or two, but it it comes back. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, a bunch of nods in the audience. And you know what? It's nothing new. Brilliant men and women throughout the centuries, you know, have been contemplated and have attempted to make sense of what we're feeling, what's going on through our hearts. You know, men like Plato, St. Augustine of Hippo, Blaise Pascal, the mathematician, C.S. Lewis, the theologian, philosopher, writer. 
And yet, I believe it was Augustine, St. Augustine, who was credited with the concept of this God-shaped void, this God-shaped emptiness within us, within human beings, that we are desperately trying to fill. And all the world's pleasures, all the world's vices cannot fill that void. You know, relationships. You know, how many of you thought, oh yeah, if I find the right person, that right one, I'm not going to feel this emptiness anymore. But nope. Yeah. How many boyfriends and girlfriends had to, did you have to go through to, to come to the realization? No, it's not a person. It's not a relationship. And it's not even getting married, right? No. Heck no. We know that. Or, or maybe it's a career, earning more money, getting more authority and power, the fame, the accolades. Nope, you can have a career all your life and still feel empty inside, still searching, still striving, trying to accomplish more and more. Or then there's the illicit relationships, finding it in sex or drugs, the narcotics, rock and roll. And and for the tech savvy members in our audience today. You know, you're, you're looking for more friends or followers or likes or retweets or shares, etc., etc. No, that, that doesn't fill that emptiness. None of that can fill that void within our hearts. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. There's only one piece that fits into your void. Regardless of what you're trying to fill that void with, nothing satisfies. Nothing will. See, but the good news is, the reason why we're here this morning is that Jesus fills that void. Having a personal relationship with Jesus satisfies, and he satisfies eternally. And I'm not talking about just knowing about Jesus or knowing about God, but I'm actually talking about knowing him. You know, for, um, some of you know this, but most of you don't about me and, and our family. We actually had the opportunity at the last interim position I was, I was at. The, um, the church owned a home, which was my parsonage. And the, the home was the, the childhood home that um, President, former President Obama grew up in. You know, like, that's pretty neat, right? But just because we lived in his home didn't mean that I knew President Obama. No, I, of course I knew about him. And I, now I knew a little bit more about him because I knew exactly, you know, I didn't know which bedroom he lived in, but we, you know, visited all the bedrooms and all this stuff. But then, but through um, some connections that I have, I actually know someone well, someone who knows someone, right? It's that there's six degrees of separation. I know someone who, who knows who went to school with President Obama at Puno. And so when President o, former President Obama comes to Hawaii, they get together. They, have, they've, um, they go play golf every outing that he comes in. And he knows. He actually knows him. That's what I'm talking about, knowing Jesus. You know, yeah, some of you are giving me that, that blank stare. Let, let me give you an illustration. Okay. There's this man named Dave who claims that he just knows everybody. Everybody, like really well, not just on, on first name basis, but everybody. And Dave's boss got tired of him bragging about knowing everybody, so he called Dave on his bluff, his seemingly seeming bluff. And his boss says, you don't know everybody. And Dave said, no, no, try me. So the boss just threw out a name, a celebrity, and he said, what about Tom Cruise? And he's like, yeah, Tom, I know Tom. He's, we go way back. Come on, I'll prove it. They jump on a plane, fly to Hollywood, go to Tom Cruise's house, knock on Tom's door, and then Tom opens it and says, hey, Dave! And the boss was astonished. They, Tom invites him in. They have some, spend some time together, and then they finish their time, and then they're in the taxi driving back to the airport, and, and the boss is like, Confused, he's like, no, that was a fluke. He said, no, no, come on, try me. So the boss, Dave's boss was like, what about President Trump? President Trump's okay, let's jump on the, let's go to the Washington. They 
get to Washington, sign up for one of the tours. They're on the tours, and it just so happens that President Trump is strolling by, and they, he sees David and says, Hey, Dave, long time no see. President Trump is like, I got to go to this meeting, but you know what? We haven't seen each other. Let's catch up a little bit. Hey, you can, who's your friend? And he, so they sit down, have coffee, and catch up for a while. Now the boss is just floored, and he's like, Really? President Trump? No, not everybody. And they're like, yeah, everybody. Not the Pope. The Pope, oh man, I go way back with the Pope. We know the Pope. So then they fly to Rome. They get to the Vatican. Right? And it, there's just a mob there. They're expecting the Pope to, to celebrate Mass. And he's like, and Dave's like, you know what? The Pope, he's not going to recognize me in the crowd. I got to go and I'll come out on the balcony with him, Okay. <laughs> Sure enough, sure enough, because Dave knew this, the, his guards and everybody, so he, he gets up, and about 30 minutes later, the boss is in, in the crowds amongst everybody. He sees the um, Pope, and he's just floored, right? So Dave comes back down, but his boss is lying on the ground, and paramedics are working on him. And he's like, oh, no, what happened? What happened? And then his boss was like, oh, man. Everything was going great, and I saw you with the Pope, and I was just, just floored. But then the guy next to me said, hey, who's that guy with Dave? <laughs> you gotta, we got to know God. No, no, we really need to have a, a personal relationship with God. And, and we just went through a sermon series titled Spiritual Disciplines about how to do that. And if you missed that, you know, we have it online on our website, with the, the past sermons where you can just, you know, explore these disciplines of, of truly developing your relationship with God. And as I said, because we were created in the image of God, in the image of God we were created, we were created to love. Because God created us in love, for love, and to love. It really is. And you know what? I... I, I I've been thinking a lot, and I don't know if that's a good thing. That can be dangerous. I've been, I've been in prayer and in meditation and, and thinking and, and just, just sensing, you know, God, what and where are you leading us next? And then I sense that God is leading us on this transition. We're going to be moving into, I've been talking about discipleship all year. You know, I've been here for a year. And I'm talking about being apprentices, that word disciple, the, the archaic word disciple in the Bible is translated, the equivalent of today's translation would be an apprentice. So an apprentice, we are apprentices of Jesus who are supposed to be going out and making more apprentices of Jesus. That's, that's our call. That's our responsibility. But you know what? As I've been saying, you can't do that on an hour, hour 15 minutes on a Sunday morning. Can you imagine going to your job, going to school for an hour a week and trying to accomplish what you need to accomplish in the 40 hours or 40, 50, 60, 70 hours plus, but then all you do is get one hour of instruction, one hour of training, one hour of equipping a week? No way, it doesn't work that way. And, and I've been talking a lot for this past year, huh? Everybody, you don't have to nod your heads, I know. I know, I have been, I have been, because that's the formula that we've been using. But you know what? I, I really sense God saying, we need to move beyond that. Don't just tell people about love. We were created in love, and that we are created to love. And let's actually spend some time and do that. And I was like, really, God? You know, that's kind of weird. That's out of the box. And he was like, yeah. You know, that heart, that heart shape thing is good and stuff, but... But no, let's move beyond that. So I, th and this could just be um, my upset stomach that I had the other day when I was, but I, I really sense God saying, well, use this, this time, less than five minutes within service. And um, most of us have one of these, right? Most of us, most of the majority of us, not everybody, because my kids don't have it. I know they, so, but most of us have one of these. Okay. For those of you who have one of these, I want you to take your phone out. Okay? And if you don't have one of these, okay, I'm improvising. 
It's okay. And if you would prefer not to take your phone out, that's okay. Because I know some of you have been, have been trained and trained really good. Don't take your phone out in church. Make sure you turn it off. Right? So it, on the back of your bulletin is a note page. You can use that instead. If not, you can use that instead. I actually have pens and envelopes available for people who, who are going to do it old school. You know, write it down. Okay, we're going to take a moment, just a, just a slight moment. And I did this this morning, and I, and I prayed. And we're going to ask God who lives in us, who has welcomed us into his presence, because he is here now. He's everywhere, but, you know, for whatever reason, when we come to church, our, our senses are heightened, and we feel him more and whatever. We're, we're going to ask him to prompt us and, and give us a name of a person who he wants us to just kind of touch at this point, this time. Okay, and this is, I, I kind of wrote out an example. And so you can, those of you with the phone, you can text them. If you don't have text, you can call briefly, please. Just let, here's the script. I'm giving you the script. So, you, Okay? You can call and say, hey, I'm in church right now. I am. I, I really am. You can hear everybody else. You can put it on speaker. Okay? okay? And my pastor asked me to reach out, to contact someone that I know who I want to tell them that I love them and God put you on my heart. Something as simple as that, so, to that, that effect. You know, I'm just reaching out and I just want to say I love you. You know, I'm, I'm in church, pastor's talking about love and he's asked me to reach somebody. Take a moment to pray. God, God will put a name on you. I promise God will because he is real. He is real. In fact, I'm going to do that as well. Just take a moment in prayer, silence. And if not, write it down. Write exactly what I just said. It just has to be, I'm just writing to let you know I love you or I miss you. I want to connect with you. Okay? And then we have envelopes, because I know you're not going to mail it. Yeah? Anybody else need an envelope, need a pen? Linda's got envelopes and pens going. If you happen to have the address and you can write the address on there, if you drop it off at the end, at the, on the um, table in the foyer, I'll mail it out for you. I'll even put the stamp on for you. Just a quick note, just a quick note. You can follow up later. They, you can call them after service. You can text them after service. Just a quick, it's just a, you know, I felt God say that I need to reach out to you. And this is a step of obedience. And steps of obedience will be recognized and will be blessed. See, I'm going to, sorry, I, I got to continue or else we're going to be way over um, you can keep doing what you got to do if you have to. But see, for most, most of my Christian upbringing, okay, coming to church on a Sunday morning was just theoretical. It's just in theory. It's, oh, I should do this. Oh, I could do this to develop a... I, I, no, 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 no. Love is real. 
Love isn't just an emotion. It's, it's action. You know, married people or those in relationships, you understand that. You can't just theoretically love someone. There, there needs to be a give and take. There's action involved in a relationship. Same is true with our relationship with God. See, that, 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 that hole in our heart, although once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, is filled, how many of you still feel kind of empty? You don't have to, you don't have to raise your hand. But it, what I'm saying is, is it's not. God is, a, God is real. Folks, he, he is real. And he cares about us. He cares us so much about us that he died for us on the cross. And in order for us to make a difference in our world, in our communities, it can only be done through the Holy Spirit of God within us. And it, you know, I, and I know it, this is, well, John, what you're saying to me is all brand new. I've never heard this before. I know, and that's the sad thing. But we're moving into this season, and into this season where, you know, we're going to manifest the presence of God here. God is here. We're going to open whatever within us that needs to be open so that we can sense his presence, that we can recognize what he's saying, that we can literally live out what the Bible says to do because the Bible calls us to be his vessels we are his conduits it's not us doing anything it's him doing it through us and that is a beautiful thing amen God has invited you to participate with him in changing the world so let's go and be disciples of Jesus apprentices of Jesus who go and make disciples of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you are a good God, a holy God, a righteous God, and every other adjective that describes you, Lord, we, words cannot, words are insufficient. Lord. But our souls cry out. Our, our spirits and our beings cry out to you to worship you. And we give you all the glory, Lord. We give you the glory. May you be glorified in our obedience, in our acts of humility, in doing the small things that you ask us to do. Empower us, Lord. And one of the things that you ask us to do is to partner with you to pray, to intercede. And that's what we're choosing to do right now as well. We pray for our brothers and sisters, our family members, especially on our prayer list, Lord. We lift them all up to you. And then we have our own needs, Lord. Yeah. The challenges are surmounting. The finances, the relationship struggles, work issues, memory issues, bodies falling apart. We just lift it all up to you, Lord. And you're a loving, caring God. You care about us, even the, when we're being bullied. Fill our hearts, Holy Spirit. Fill us with your presence. Fill that loss that sense of loss within our hearts, Lord. More, Lord. We ask for more. More of your presence. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.